I have never seen this before in my life. This guy is amazing. It's Leon Lett. No. You've seen him. You love him. Thanksgiving Day's most memorable moments. Thanksgiving, baby, you got a lot to give today. But why do the Lions and Cowboys always play on Thanksgiving? And who started that whole turkey leg thing? This is a turducken right here. And you see, you cut it like right down here. This is the evolution of NFL Thanksgiving Day games. Did you know Turkey Day football dates all the way back to the college teams of the 1800s? So when the NFL started back in 1920, they followed suit, and we've seen stuff like this for the better part of 100 seasons. Happy Thanksgiving. You will be my turkey all day today. All I ask for is green bean cash for about twice a year. Can't even get it. This year's Galloping Gobbler. Well, thank you. I don't know what to say. Hey, Just, I guess it's better than not getting it. Portsmouth, Ohio, 1934. A group led by radio station owner George Richards purchased the NFL's Portsmouth Spartans, moved the franchise to Detroit, and renamed them the Lions. At the time, Major League Baseball's Detroit Tigers were the city's main sports attraction. Thus, Richards had to make a splash to draw fans. Other NFL teams had played on Thanksgiving before 1934, but the Lions had a major marketing edge. Richards owned a radio station and made a deal with NBC to broadcast his Thanksgiving games on 94 stations across the country. A new tradition was born. The Lions not only sold out their stadium, they had to turn people away at the gates. 10-1 Detroit hosted the 11-0 Chicago Bears in a matchup that to this day featured the most combined wins by two teams heading into a Thanksgiving Day game. The Bears would win 19-16 and stay undefeated. The Lions have played on the holiday every year since 1934, minus a stretch from 1939 to 1944. No Thanksgiving Day games were held from 41 to 44 due to World War II observance. Skip ahead to 1951, where the Lions and Packers produced the highest scoring game on Thanksgiving Day history with 87 combined points. Did you know the very first televised Thanksgiving game was broadcast by the now defunct Dumont's television network in 1953? CBS would take over the broadcast in 1956, but now let's jump ahead to 1962. Coaching the Packers has been an unequal thrill for Vince Lombardi, who has at his disposal perhaps the greatest football team ever assembled. The Lions once again hosted the Packers. Vince Lombardi led Green Bay to an NFL title in 1961, and his 62 squad came into the game at 10-0. What happened next would be coined the Thanksgiving Day Massacre. Detroit's defense shut down Hall of Famers Bart Starr, Paul Horning, and Jim Taylor. A national TV audience watched the Lions dominate the world champs in convincing fashion. Green Bay would score a couple of late touchdowns, but ultimately suffer their only loss of the season. What the hell's going on out here? All right, here's a fun fact for you. After Chicago plays Detroit in 2019, the Bears and Packers franchises will have each played 36 Thanksgiving Day games. That's tied for the most all time by any team other than the Lions and Cowboys, of course. Speaking of America's team, fast forward with me to 1966. Dallas GM Tex Schramm saw an opportunity to get the Cowboys in the national spotlight by playing on Turkey Day. Sure, the Lions had filled their stadium, but there was no guarantee that Dallas could do the same. Schramm signed the Cowboys up anyway, and fans showed up in droves. The team broke its attendance record as 80,259 people crammed into the Cotton Bowl. The Cowboys defeated the Browns 26-14, and a second Thanksgiving tradition was born. Back to pass, low deep, the ball high in the air, racing for it, touchdown! He is arguably the biggest one-game wonder in NFL history. On Thanksgiving 1974, unknown backup quarterback Clint Longley replaced the injured Roger Staubach against the Redskins. Down 16-3 in the third quarter, Clint Longley rallied Dallas to an improbable 24-23 victory in his first game ever. Have a day, Clint Longley. He's going long. Down the near sideline, Pearson makes the catch at the five. Touchdown! Pearson goes in for the touchdown! Since 1966, the Cowboys have missed hosting Thanksgiving games only twice. That's because in 1975 and 1977, the NFL chose the St. Louis Cardinals as its second host. That did not go so well. 
They were defeated 32 to 14 by Buffalo in 75, and in 76 they faced the Cowboys in Dallas, losing 19 to 14. Then as the host again in 77, the Cardinals allowed six touchdown passes to Dolphins quarterback Bob Greasy in a 55-14 loss. He's in the open, he's got it, touchdown Dolphins! Greasy's six scores are matched only by Peyton Manning, who tied the Thanksgiving record in 2004. And while all that was happening in the mid-70s, O.J. Simpson broke the NFL's single-game rushing record against the Lions in 1976. O.J. running to the left, turns the corner at the 30. O.J. at the 25, the 20, and falls ahead of the 15. That does it, he broke the record. From 1970 to 2005, three NFC teams and one AFC team played every Thanksgiving. Detroit has always played the early game, followed by Dallas in the late afternoon. The Lions get the early game because the 12.30 p.m. Eastern time kickoff would be 11.30 a.m. in Dallas. And really, who wants to kick off before noon on a holiday? I'm not even awake yet. The first game starts at a special time of 12.30 rather than the typical 1 p.m. start. It allows an extra 30 minutes to prevent overlap into the late game in case of overtime. And oh, by the way, the first ever overtime game on Thanksgiving, it lasted just 13 seconds. Williams breaks out of the pack. Dave Williams to the 30. Touchdown, Chicago, they win it on the kickoff after overtime. Surprisingly, there have only been five overtime games to date on Thanksgiving. You might remember this one. We'll have a toss to determine who receives, who will call it from Pittsburgh. Number 36, heads, tails, tails, heads. Call it plays in the air. Heads is the call. He said heads, it is a tail. Oh, I believe he said tail. He did. Look at Jerome Bettis. He's still, what's going on? We want you change, you change in the head. We want the ball. Oh, oh, man. Detroit has won the toss. We'll receive. Jerome Bettis said tails. All right, so there were major questions about that coin toss in 98, but there was no doubt who was the best player on the field in 82. First down, Lion. Here comes the rush by Taylor. And you talk about strong, you talk about athletic ability, look at that. Danielson looking outside, he threw, picked off by Lawrence Taylor. The main the seven yard touchdown interception. Say, there are some defensive players that are great players. They play well. There are some that are great enough to dominate a game. And that's the type of defensive player Lawrence Taylor is. It is perhaps the most dominant effort by any defensive player ever. Badly in a knee injury, Lawrence Taylor notched a sack, a forced fumble, and a pick six all in one half as New York took down Detroit 13-6. Jump ahead to 1989, Hall of Fame coach and then CBS broadcaster John Madden awarded the first Turkey Leg Award to the game's most valuable player. Eagles defensive end Reggie White won the award, and from there, a Thanksgiving star was born. And I'm not talking about Reggie. This is a turducken right here. This thing here is a deboned duck stuffed in a deboned chicken stuffed in a deboned turkey. Turducken. Yeah. <laughs> Picture. That's the, that is it. And you see, you cut it like right down here. <laughs> now there, there is a turkey. I mean, here's a leg, here's a leg. Then we got three here, we got three here. Four legs, couldn't hold them, so any turkey that gets this big needs eight legs. All right, 1993. Dolphins and Cowboys in a snowy Texas stadium. You can't tell the story of Thanksgiving football without this play. Roll it, Leon. Doug Peterson to hold. Blocked. The Cowboys will win. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait Wales in the end zone. No one covered it, and Miami did. That could be a touchdown if Miami has covered it. A Dallas player touched the ball, and then the Dolphins went on and recovered it. It's on the one-yard line. Now someone touches the football here. Watch what happens. It's Leon Lett. No! Oh, Lett, who is haunted by a Super Bowl misplay. The Dolphins pull it out. 16-14. 
Even with Leon Lett's mistake, Dallas went on to capture its second straight Lombardi trophy. Now jump ahead to the following season. With Troy Aikman and Rodney Pete both out for the Cowboys, it would be up to third-string quarterback and Princeton grad Jason Garrett to take down Brett Favre and the Mighty Packers. Garrett back to throw it. Going deep. He's got Harper. Harper's going to score. Garrett going deep for Irvin. A touchdown, Dallas. The future Dallas head coach passed for 311 yards and two touchdowns in a 42-31 Cowboys victory. He is absolutely amazing. There this... may have been a better runner, but I have never seen him. Can we take a moment, just a moment, to appreciate Barry Sanders? We got to see him perform on Thanksgiving for 10 straight seasons. Like this 1997 game against the Bears, where he totaled 175 yards and three touchdowns. Sanders has got some room to operate. Barry Sanders inside the 10, touchdown. Unbelievable. Can he accelerate? Sanders again. Shakes another. Barry Sanders touchdown his second of the day. Well, it didn't take long for the NFL to find its next freak athlete. Just a year after Barry's epic performance, Vikings rookie Randy Moss put on a show we will never forget. And he is throwing it back to Cunningham, the old flea picker. Open is Randy Moss, and in the end zone is a Minnesota touchdown. Here's Cunningham back to throw it and going deep, and he's got Moss, and there's a flag on the play, and Moss has caught the pass, and it's in the end zone anyway. Touchdown. Just throw it as far as you can. This guy is amazing. Minnesota. It's Randy Moss breaks a tackle, and Randy Moss races down the sideline and just outruns everybody into the end zone. Randy Moss has three catches today and three touchdowns. In 2006, the league introduced the third Thanksgiving Day game, which is still played today. The NFL Network aired the primetime games from 2006 to 2011 before NBC bought the rights to the third game beginning in 2012. And that's when millions of families had the joy of watching this happen. Well, years ago we talked to Tom Moore then at Indianapolis, the offensive coordinator. He got a busted play here. And then oh, no. and then Sanchez gets hit. The ball is loose and it's alive. And then going into the end zone is Steve Gregory. I have never seen this before in my life. Mark Sanchez not expecting it. And it was the backside of Brandon Moore that knocked the ball out. Starting in 2012, all three networks with NFL rights carried one game apiece. CBS and Fox split the first two games, which are rotated annually. CBS gets the early game, and Fox gets the late game in even-numbered years, and vice versa in odd-numbered years. 2014 was the first time we saw only NFC versus NFC matchups. Since then, none of the three Thanksgiving games have been tied to any conference. And as long as we're dishing out facts, how about some more? The Jaguars are the only modern team that has never played on Thanksgiving. Troy Aikman holds the record for most passing yards in the Thanksgiving Day game with 455 in 1998. And four years earlier, Sterling Sharp set a Turkey Day record with four receiving touchdowns against Dallas. Sterling was incredible. Far to throw it. Comes out of the pocket and wings it deep. Touchdown, Sterling Sharp. Do you remember the most lopsided Thanksgiving Day game? Well, it was in 1980, and the Cowboys crushed the Seahawks 51 to seven. The Rams have the longest active Thanksgiving drought of any team, with their last appearance coming in 1975, and that includes their days in St. Louis. And you'll have to go all the way back to their days in Cleveland when receiver Jim Benton went off for 303 receiving yards way back in 1945, a Thanksgiving milestone that is yet to be surpassed. But when you talk Thanksgiving Day records, there is one that stands tall, and it predates the butt fumble, the turducken, even the Detroit Lions. In 1929, Chicago Cardinals fullback Ernie Nevers scored all 40 of his team's points in a win over the Bears. That's six touchdowns and four extra points all by himself. Never say nevers. There you have it. Now go eat, relax, stretch before that turkey bowl. Yeah, there you go. And school your family on the ins and outs of Thanksgiving football.